Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Luke's Worship Service and Graduation Sunday. My name is Denisha Battle, and I am a 2020 graduate from Challenger Early College High School. And I just want to say thank you for everything you've helped me through my journey in high school. And I also want to congratulate my other fellow graduates out there. And even though that we didn't get our ceremony and we probably didn't get our prom, I just want to say that we finally made it. And that is one accomplishment that we should celebrate. And if you could join me to our call of worship, that would be great. Um, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day of new beginnings. This is a time for growing into new disciples for Jesus. Come, let us prepare ourselves for worship. Let us be prepared for service to God. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Our opening hymn this morning is Through It All, number 507, and we will sing this twice. everybody how are you this morning I was thinking about the wind and some of my most special memories are about being out in the wind um, being in a boat and feeling the wind on my face uh, sitting by a creek and hearing the water move but feeling the breeze in the mountain I grew up in the mountains and it makes me uh, want to go home want to go back there when I think about being in the mountains when the wind's blowing. I started thinking about a story in the Bible from John chapter 14. And that's in the New Testament. And it's a story that, that Jesus really wants us to know is that even though Jesus went away after Easter and Jesus was resurrected and he went back to heaven, he wanted us to know just like the wind that he is still with us. And he sent us an advocate and an advocate is someone who supports, who's there all the time for us, and um, who loves us no matter what. And that was the Holy Spirit. And this morning when I was thinking about the wind, I've got my fan blowing over here, and you know, as I get closer to it, I feel that wind, and if it's hot outside, you know you want to go in and feel the, feel the air so it cools you down, or um, it makes you remember things. And I brought this morning um, a stick of all kinds of streamers. And you know, I, I, as, I'm, as I'm watching them blow, I kept thinking, how are they blowing? What's making them blow? Well, the fan, and, and it pushes wind through and air, and it turns, and it makes us, makes us remember the coolness of the air, and it makes them blow. But you know, we can't see it. I mean, I can feel it, but I can't see it. And right now, more than ever, God wants us to know that the Holy Spirit, even though we can't see it, is with us. And how do we know that? How do we know that the Holy Spirit is with us? Well, look at the people around you that are sitting with you this morning. Take hold of their hands, touch them, feel them. You know they're there. But more than that, you know their love for you. 
You know their love for you by the things that they do, but you might not be able to see that. You can feel it. You can say, my mom, my dad, my grandparents love me. I know they love me by the things they do. But the love that we feel is not something we can touch. It's just something that we know. And so this morning and this week, as you move about, I want you to think about, you know, Jesus is everywhere. Jesus is around me. All I have to do is watch and look. And in my heart, I will feel Him. Thank you, guys. Have a great week. Good morning. We have some special guests with, guests with us this morning. We have the Cross Flame Senior Group. It's such a bittersweet um, time. We've lost so much of rehearsal and tour with them this year. It's, it's just really sad. And plus, they're going off to college. So that's wonderful for them, and I'm very excited. But we will we'll definitely, definitely miss them here with Cross Flame and in the body of our worshiping community. So this morning they have come in to sing a special song for us and to um, grace us with this and it just fits beautifully with the sermon anyway. So I hope this will be really meaningful to you. I'm gonna give them a, a quick opportunity to introduce each of themselves and also to tell you where they're going to school. So Marlon, introduce yourself. My name is Marlon Florian, hi. I'm going to CBCC for two years and then transferring. Hey, my name is Andre and I'm going to I'm Grace. I'm going to CDCC next year and then transferring. I'm Marcus Hauser and I'll be going to the University of Greensboro for four years.
Good morning. Our scripture reading is from John 14, verse 15 through 21. Listen for the word of the Lord. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving God, we thank you for a day where we get to hear your word, that we get to experience your Holy Spirit, that we get to renew our minds, that we get to grow in wisdom. So God, fall afresh on us this morning, pour out your Holy Spirit. And Lord, let the words of my heart and my mouth be ever pleasing in your sight. Amen. Well, in 2012, I had a wonderful experience of leading a youth team to Burl Boom, Belize, which is a small village outside of Belize City. And in that village, we were redoing or uh, renovating a manse, which is what we call a parsonage here in the United States. And so while we were there, we spent a lot of time with villagers and would walk the streets and get to know them. And on one specific day, we bagged up rice and beans and flour in one pound packages, and we walked the streets giving them out to each household. And as we went from house to house, we got to know people, we got to hear their stories. And about midway through our quest on the streets, a lady met us in her driveway. And her name was Darlene, and she came running out and with pure joy on her face and tears that filled her eyes. You see, Darlene introduced herself and said, what are you doing? As she saw us bundled with food in our arms. She wondered because she had been praying to God for provisions, for food, for what she needed in that moment. And then we showed up. You see, Darlene's pantry had been being depleted. She had been using her resources and wondered how those resources would be replenished. And she went to God in prayer. And as we talked and, and her eyes continued to fill with tears of joy, she shared with us that she was a caregiver for her mother, who was 101 years old. She was the oldest in the village and was close to her final days here on earth. And so as she shared about her mother, Mary, I asked if I could see her and pray with her. And Darlene was ecstatic that we would go into a home and pray with someone that we didn't even know. So she led us back into a back bedroom in her home where we found her mother, Mary, laying in a hospital bed. And her bed was cozily set between two windows so that she could watch outside so the sun would hit her in her bed while she laid there. And so Mary, as I entered the room first, her eyes lit up and as her body lay there frail and unable to move, 
I experienced and saw pure joy. A joy like none I had ever seen before. A joy that lit up the room and told a story without ever saying a word. So I went up to Mary's bed and introduced myself and the first thing she wanted was my hand. And so she held my hand and we talked and she wanted me to come close because her height, her, she was losing her eyesight. So I bent down to her bed and we talked. And she shared Jesus with me. And she shared the stories of how she used to run, but now her legs could no longer do that. And we talked about the beauty of what life would look like after. That she would be able to run again. Mary shared with us the promises of Jesus Christ. Mary shared with the whole team what it looked like to remain steadfast in her faith. Mary was approaching a change into a life eternal. And with that, she knew it wholeheartedly. She told us, I'm not going to be here but a few more days. I know it. But the truth is, I'm going to live every moment as if I have a lifetime. We also need to live our life as if we were running the race and staying the course and remain steadfast as we have a lifetime. Jesus, in his final discourse with the disciples, was sharing with them an assurance and a hope he was giving them a message that meant far more than what they really understood at the time. I can tell you, each one of us have experienced change. We have had to be in quarantine and navigate our lives in a new way. Our graduates, you have had to navigate school in a profoundly new way with online classes. You have had to remain steadfast in getting up in the morning and doing your work, even though the environment around you changed and you didn't know what to do or what was going to change in the future. You had to remain steadfast. And so this morning, we're, we're talking about this change as well because we're getting ready to enter back into a new season not only for our graduates, but for everyone. Where things open back up, we have to navigate something yet again. And graduates, I know you may be feeling a little bit anxious about what the fall looks like or what is going to be your next steps. What will you have to endure? And our message is clear for us from Jesus in his letter to the disciples, in, we find in John, that he gives us advice, he gives us instructions, and I want us to read, I'm going to go, with, go back to verse 12 and kind of give you where kind of the meat of this whole letter stands. And Jesus speaks to them and he says, Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these. Jesus is giving not only the disciples this message that when you have faith, you will do the works. That the inside of you will match the outside. And that's what will help them sustain and remain on course in their, in their life. That is what will sustain their faith. Is holding on to those promises and the assurance of God. And then in the verse 15 he says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And so in through all this change 
That's a message for us. That we get to keep God's commandments by loving God and loving neighbor. And all the other things that we are enduring, we don't have to worry about. Now I know that's not easy. I know that's difficult because we want things the way we want them. And there is this anxiousness because we don't know what's to come and what's going to happen and how do we live our life and where are our paychecks coming from and do I, am I going to be able to take this class or am I going to be able to move into a dorm like I normally do? You see, in Jesus' message, He doesn't say, oh, your life is going to be normal. Life is going to go on with progression and the way the comforts of the world. No. He assures them that He's going to be with them. That he's not going to, that we are not going to be alone in anything. In fact, he says, I'm sending you an advocate. And this advocate will be with you through me. Because, because you know me, you know the Spirit. And because this advocate will be here, I will be here also. And that's Trinitarian language where we know that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all together. They are one. And when we experience one, we experience the other. There's no separation. And so Jesus is giving them this message, telling them that something wonderful is going to happen. That God is going to be with them through this Holy Spirit. That Jesus will remain with them. All we have to do is keep His commandments. Live in a life of faith. Grow in our understanding. Love our neighbor. And do what He asks us to do. And that's the assurance He was giving the disciples that they weren't going to be alone. Even though they experienced this change, they were not going to be alone. In our change, we are not going to be alone. I share with you this story. In 1951, Representative Richard Bowling of Missouri proposed a dam for his district, but saw it defeated in the committee. He brought it up before the entire house, knowing the lack he lacked enough votes for his passage. But Bowling had befriended Sam Rayburn, which was the Speaker of the House. When Bowling rose to present his case, Sam Rayburn stood up beside him. He rose in support. He rose so that he would not be alone. And in that effort, the bill passed. In whatever we do, when we stay the course, just as Mary in her story, or Richard Bowling, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit is with us. Jesus is with us. That we don't have to go through change or life alone. And so graduates, I, I share this with you because in the next couple of months you will be experiencing a newness. You'll be leaving what you've always known in high school and in embarking on a new way of living. Whether it's a job or going to college, living at home or living on your own, there's going to be a change. There's going to be a change inside of you where you become more independent. And there's going to be a change on the outside of you where your actions are a little bit different. And your walk in life is a little bit different. I encourage you to stay steadfast in your faith. Knowing that God goes with you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is right there with you as well. Standing beside you in every single move. Just stay the course. Don't linger from your faith. Don't allow the, the influences of the world to take away that assurance. 
that God gives us through Christ. I ask you this. Where will you put your confidence? Where will you put your confidence in the times when you struggle and when you have those questions? Remain steadfast. When life happens and we need one, someone to stand by us, who will we call? Will we call on Christ? Will we call on our Christian brothers and sisters? Will we call on the body of Christ to walk with us? I sure hope so. Even though we're not together in person, I don't know what we, we as a body of Christ would do without one another. We are a support and God works in and through each one of, of you. So as we all navigate life in new, let us hold fast that Christ remains with us. And as we approach Pentecost Sunday in a couple weeks, hold fast that the Spirit rests with us. As Easter people, we celebrate the resurrection of Christ and life eternal. But in this message, it's not just about the life eternal. It's about life now. We have life now. Jesus offers us a way now to be able to remain steadfast in all that we do. So hold fast to that. Hold fast to that hope. Take it with you. Let it guide your steps in all that you do. In closing, I want to read... The words to blessed assurance, the hymn. These words give us encouragement to stay the course. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is our story. This should be our song. We should praise our Savior all the day long, knowing that God goes with us through the power of Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit. May we rest in that assurance. Amen. This morning as we celebrate our graduates, I want to take our time this morning with our pastoral prayer by lifting up a prayer for our graduates. So I ask you that you join with me now as we pray. Lord, as we pause this morning in prayer, we do so thankful for our 2020 graduates. We thank you, O oh God, for all that they have accomplished. And we pray that your guiding hand will lead them as they begin this next part of their journey. Lord, we thankful for, are thankful for teachers and Sunday school leaders, for youth leaders and scout leaders, for choir directors and athletic coaches, for parents and grandparents, and all who have mentored and guided, directed and taught these young people. We ask, O oh God, that as these graduates move into the future, that their passion for life and learning impact our world. And may it make a better place for all people. We also ask, O oh God, that when these graduates become discouraged, that your presence through the Holy Spirit might encourage them to continue on serving and caring for that which they are passionate about. O oh God, we pray that your grace, your mercy, your peace, your hope, and your joy be a guiding force for these young people. 
We ask, O God, may your hands of blessing be upon them and their families this day. For we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, good morning. On behalf of the United Methodist Men, I'd like to extend our congratulations and best wishes to our graduate. It is a pleasure for Catherine Snipes and I to be with you to announce the recipients of the inaugural Charles M. Snipes Scholarship. Before I ask Catherine to come and make any comments that she wishes and then to announce our scholarship recipients, I'd just like to give you a little background on, on how we arrived uh, to this this morning. Um, back in 2018, uh, Pastor Joe and I were having a conversation when he mentioned his desire for a scholarship uh, program for our students uh, here at St. Luke's. Uh, from that desire, uh, United Methodist Men then decided to take it on as a ministry. Uh, the original name for the ministry was simply the United Methodist Men Scholarship. Uh, there were several of our members who expressed their desire for the scholarship to be renamed in memory and honor of Charles. And we all knew in Methodist Men that there were several things that, that Charles uh, loved dearly. He, um, foremost, he loved his God. Uh, he, cherished, he cherished and loved his family. Uh, he loved this church uh, of which he was a charter member. He definitely loved sharing a meal and fellowship with the United Methodist men each month. And he loved young people and seeing them further their education. So, you know, it's only fitting that the scholarship is now known as the Charles M. Snipes Scholarship. It is now my pleasure to uh, ask Catherine Snipes to come and make any comments she wishes and then to announce our scholarship recipients. Catherine? Thank you, Matt. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here. I can't say enough about Charles, and I can't say enough about how much he loved his church and his God. His God first always. I'm so proud that he belonged to me for a short period of time. That may sound a little funny, but I know that he really belonged to God in heaven with him. That's where he needed to be. I loved Charles, and Charles loved me. But mostly Charles loved his church and his friends. And I was jealous always. I was talking that. <laughs> I joked with him all the time. Sometimes it aggravated him. And sometimes he just laughed because he knew where it was going to be coming from. I was very proud of Charles. He was everything that anyone could ever want in their life. That was my Charles. He was a good man, the best. We had 16 years of marriage. It was a long enough. He was just too super, just fantastic. But I think God needed him more than I did. He needed that help. And I know that he is looking down on me right now and he's going, I can't believe she's doing this. <laughs> he would just die like that. He couldn't believe some things that I would actually do. This is one of them. I don't think he really thought about this. And actually, I don't think I really thought about it either. But uh, he, he did love. The men's breakfast. He, I did too sometimes when we bring them up. My biscuit. <laughs> but it's, it was a fun thing to do, a fun thing. And it's something that, you know, when you go to church, it's nice to have fun. You don't have to be just all stale and, and, and just by the wayside and not really alive. You, you're here to enjoy what we're doing here. This is, this is our place of happiness. God is with us here. Thank goodness. Hopefully he's with us all the time. But sometimes we sort of forget. But when we're here, we remember. And that's wonderful. My husband, Charles, never forgot. He always remembered God. And that's where he wanted to be. And I'm so proud of him. So proud. The scholarship recipients one will receive 
Well, actually, each one of them will receive a thousand dollars award. One goes to Denisha. I'm going to get this name wrong. I know him. Denisha Henry. And the other goes to Ashley Rojo. And I think that is just fantastic. They're both studying psychology. We could use more than that. Uh, then, uh, Denisha will be going to uh, Western Carolina University to study psychology. It is really wonderful. And uh, Ashley will be going to uh, App Appalachian State University to study psychology. You know, we shame couldn't get one they all are. But they are great girls. And I'm so proud of them as well. And I'm glad, I'm very happy to be able to say on behalf of Charles and the breakfast people, I lost the word, you know I did. <laughs> on behalf of them, I am so proud to give them to, to oh, I'm just so happy about this, to have them be the recipients for Charles M. Snipes. He would be so proud for both of them. He truly believed in, in, in education, and this is something that he would have loved. Thank you so much. Thank you for Charles, and thank you for St. Luke's. This morning we want to lift up our announcements to you as you worship there in your homes. First of all, we want to re remind you that, that today at 5 p.m. we will parade by our high school graduating seniors' homes. If you would like to participate, we ask you to line up your car in the church parking lot at 5 p.m. today. Please stay in your cars and follow the lead church vehicle by each graduate's home. You are welcome to decorate your car at home celebrating our 2020 graduates. If you have questions, you're welcome to contact Pastor Joe or Pastor Monica. Secondly, I want to remind you that our Administrative Council will meet on Monday at 6 o'clock. This meeting will be by Zoom, and you should have received an email and a Zoom invitation to this meeting if you're a part of our Administrative Council. Thirdly, I'd like to lift up a ch call charge conference that will take place on Tuesday, May 26 at 6 p.m. This uh, charge conference will also take place by Zoom, and it, it is uh, the purpose of that meeting will be to approve our new senior pastor's salary package. And lastly, I want to re remind you that we are collecting men's clothing on each Wednesday between 10 and 2 at the FLC. Uh, these clothings will be used uh, to be shared with our friends and neighbors at the soup kitchen um, as they uh, gather each day for their meals. Thank you for being uh, attentive in our worship service. God bless. This is our closing hymn, number 369, Blessed Assurance. <laughs>